<laughs> Greetings, friend. Here we are playing Outward once again. Welcome to part two of our beginner's guide, walk through Outward. If you're new to Outward, you're looking to get started into it, and you found this episode, please uh, refer back to part one of this tutorial, and that way you'll get caught up on what we're doing here. So let's get that tribal favor. Okay, so what I'm going to do, we've got our fang axe and our leather attire that we've crafted. Let's go into through the Sierra's of storage. We're going to go through this little cave and we're going to hit the beach. We'll complete that tribal favor and we'll gather a whole bunch of goodies to sell. All right, let's go ahead and turn our lantern on. Here we are, the Sierra's of storage. There's a couple things to grab. I'm going to take this old lantern. I'm actually going to go to my skills here and um, I'm going to put the throw lantern skill on, assign it to a quick slot. I'm going to go ahead and use that early on. Take the fl uh, I'm, I'm going to leave the flint and steel. I already have a flint and steel to start fires. so I'll leave the bedroll. I've already got a bedroll. Okay, I'll take bread. Again, you want to leave some stuff behind because you want to keep your bag um, empty. Not empty, but you want to keep it from getting overweight. Let's read the Gay Berry Jam recipe. Just click on it in your inventory. Okay. I've got a junk pile over here. All right, we've got a looter mask. I'll go ahead and equip it. Take the hatchet to sell. We'll leave the arrows and leave the spikes. Unless you want to build yourself an archer, go ahead and take those arrows. You're going to need them. We'll take the mining pick as long as we can fit it into our bag. Okay, so we're coming up on some troglodytes, a couple of them. We're thirsty. Let's drink the water, get that stamina a water bonus, stamina bonus from drinking water. We'll eat some tartine. That gives us another stamina boost. See, now we've got stamina recovery two from the tartine, whereas just the gay berries alone gave you stamina recovery one. We'll use an ice rag. We'll also use our rage skill. Again, we're going to get as prepared as we can get at the time being. Because you want to go into battle confident. Confident of victory. The last thing you want to do is get into a battle and panic. Throw that lantern. Nice. Good. Okay, with these troglodytes, they got a couple different attacks. Um, you're going to be able to make quick work of them with, with a fang weapon varnished up or with an elemental rag on it. Alright, that guy got me with his sweeping attack. That's okay. All they've got is wood. So, as you can see, my health went down a bit. I'm going to eat the jerky. That'll begin some health restoration. See that status effect there? Health recovery 2.25 health per second. Lasts for 600 seconds. Alright, so that's cool. Got some green mushrooms here. Gather those. We'll use those in a cooking recipe that we will show you later. Now there's a, a place to mine some iron over on this wing of this little cave. It's actually quite a big cave. Okay, iron scrap and thick oil. There's a chance of getting a gravel beetle when you mine iron. And there's also chances of getting different gems when mining. So the gravel beetle is important for certain recipes. Similar to the ochre spice beetle. Alright, so now we're heading down here. Head downhill. Okay, this little sign. Going forward, strand you in the wilderness until you make your way back to the village. Okay, so it lets you know that when you drop off this little, uh, this little bluff here, you're not going to be able to get back up. Let's exit out to the chairs and knees out beyond Sierzo for the first time. We've got our fang axe equipped. We're ready. Okay. Let's turn our lantern off. Take a look at that looter mask. That's arguably the funnest part of Outward is getting new equipment and uh, just seeing how it looks on your character. Gather the seaweed. Okay, good. There's some fishing spots here, too, that you need to gather. You don't need to, but I recommend it. There's a chance of getting blue sand, which is a valuable ingredient for an armor set that Loudhammer 
the blacksmith and Sierzo will craft for you. It's also valuable to get blue sand just to sell it for the silver. All right, more seaweed. So as we collect the more, more of the seaweed, I'm gonna craft more ice rags. I think we should. But why not? You've got them. You've got the seaweed, you've got the rags. Any ice rags that we don't use, we can sell. Okay, we'll just craft as many as we can. Here we go, we're coming up on uh, Michael Aberdeen. I can't. You can I give can't him a move. potion a or a bandage. Got me. I'm gonna give him a potion. I can feel it working. Oh, thank you, lot. I'm not okay. going to die here. He's really grateful. Thanks a bunch. Ow. I don't think I'm fit to run back home just okay. yet. He gives us the tribal favor. Here we got blue sand right here. You can see it in the shadow that the, is cast by the rock. Let's gather that blue sand. All right. Okay. There's these mantis shrimps off in the distance. Try to avoid those if it's your first time going through outward. If you're experienced with combat, you'll be able to handle those guys, even at this stage in the game. So, be encouraged by that. If you stick stick with it, you'll improve. And you'll get better and you'll be able to handle these more difficult enemies. Go ahead and mine the amylite, a shell-like material, valuable for crafting. An armor set. You can also sell it. If you're not a fan of what's called the amylite armor. But if we get if we get certain ingredients, we'll go ahead and craft the amylite armor. It's a decent set. It should give you a good start. Okay, again, just gathering all the blue sand. We have earned the tribal favor, but we're not gonna return to Rissa just yet. There's many valuable things to grab on the beach. Again, let's just craft more ice rags. Okay, we've got another fishing spot. Nice, blue sand, good. Okay, gather the seaweed. More seaweed over here. Great. Another fishing spot. <laughs> worker boots added. Okay, I'm gonna decraft them. I've already got worker boots equipped. So we'll decraft those. Might as well make more ice rags. Again, use them liberally. There's blue sand in the shadow. I don't know if you saw that. It's pretty easy to detect now that the sun's falling over the horizon. Look at that sunset over the Chersonese coastline. Beautiful sight. One of the many beautiful sights you'll see in Outward. I think the uh, vistas, the scenery is what kept drawing me back to the game after my initial discouragement from combat. So I just urge you not to give up on this game. Many people do give up early. It's an enjoyable experience. So, got this mantis shrimp here. I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna take him out. I'm gonna eat the tartine for stamina. I'm gonna drink water again for stamina. I'm gonna ice, I'm gonna equip my fist weapons because I'm really comfortable with them. They're just cloth knuckles, but they'll do the job. All right, I'm gonna drop the bag <clears throat> so I can dodge. Now let's get to work. Sneak up behind him. Good. Watch out for that AOE attack. Good. Nice. Again, he's got the AOE. He really rises up high when he does that AOE, so it's... There you go. Nice. Got the projectile. Okay. Let's make sure you dodge around that. Oh, man. Excellent work. Okay, let's get our bag. All right, 
turn on our light now that the sun is pretty much disappearing over the horizon. Gather seaweed. So see, as you gain, gain experience fighting each enemy, you'll learn their attack patterns. And you'll be able to handle them without panicking. That was my big problem early. I'd go into a panic when I'd get into battle. And if you're new to Outward, you probably know what I'm speaking of. Because it's probably happening to you. So, unless you've got nerves of steel. Let's mine this Amalite. Or unless you're just super accustomed to playing adventure uh, games. I myself am not a huge gamer, so I don't. I wasn't quite ready for it. Blue sand. Again, easy to detect at night. During the daytime, it's difficult to see these patches of blue sand. That's why it's good to comb this beach at dusk. So let's head on up. I'm going to actually look over the crest of this hill, just see if there's any, I don't know, many, maybe hyenas I can grab. Not grab, uh, destroy. Okay, gay berries. Trying to get that beetle. Okay, there's some hyenas. Okay, so I'm going to equip my fang axe again. Still got my stamina bonuses. I'm going to drink... Let's see. I don't have any teas. Okay, let's use the frost. Frost rag again. All right, these guys are gonna come at me probably together. Okay, nice. Kinda wait for them to lunge at you again. That's kind of the, that's kind of the tactic we'll play with the hyenas. This guy is not lunging at me. There he goes. Alright, good. Hide and raw meat. Nice. Hide and raw meat. Good. Okay, I'm not going to veer too far off from the coastline. Because I don't want to get lost here. I don't want you to get lost as well if you're following along. Alright, I'm not going to go up that path. There's a cave here on the side of the cliff. Starfish Cave. We're going to enter into that. Now that the sun is, is down, the moon is pulling out the tide, and there's a lower portion of that cave that we can now access. And there's some blue sand down there, and a few other good things to grab. During the day, the tide is high. You won't be able to get inside that, that lower portion. All right, Starfish Cave is easily identified by large shells embedded in the cliff otherworldly large shells it's one of the great things about outward too is a lot of uh, fantastical sites with the oversized shells things you'll never see in real life but um, it's just part of the fantasy of of ri the world the game world all right here we are there you can see the blue sand and Amidst the shells, blue sand encrusted. Nice, really cool, really great look for Starfish Cave. Let's go ahead and enter in. As you can see, our health's down a bit. Let's just um, actually, it's not down that much. We're not going to worry about the health right now. Let's enter into Starfish Cave. There's a mantis shrimp in here towards the back of the cave, so I'm gonna. I'm going to crouch. I'm going to turn my lantern off. I'm going to put out the lantern. Let's crouch. Enemies will notice you easily, more easily, if you've got your lantern lit. And then obviously, crouching will, will decrease the, the risk of being spotted. Okay, blue sand. Excellent. Okay, seaweed. Nice. I'm going to get out of my crouch because the mantis shrimp is pretty far away. Two more blue sand. Junk pile. I'm going to just grab everything in here. Okay. 
There's more blue sand, then I turn to, to keep an eye on the mantis shrimp. Two blue sand again. Sometimes you'll you'll harvest two blue sands out of one patch. Always a good bonus to receive. Alright, so we're not gonna worry about that mantis shrimp, just let him be. Okay, as we exit the cave, I'm actually going to deploy my uh, improvised bedroll. And we'll sleep till the morning because it's a lot less intimidating to travel by daylight. I'm trying to get back to Sierzo during the nighttime. It can turn into a chaotic mess. Okay, if you get spotted. Let's see, what am I doing? Deployables. Okay. That mantis shrimp, I don't really want to fight him. Use the bed rule. Actually, I want to unequip my bag. Okay, why would you want to sleep with a giant nomad backpack on, cooking pot, kind of metal banging against your spine? Okay. Sleep for one, two, three. Repair, repair my axe a bit. And you're going to want to guard. Get that ambush. I like to get it down to about 10% chance. All right, sleep. That's a total of eight hours there. Confirm that. I don't know why I leave the ambush at around 10% and not just bring it to zero. I think there's a little added excitement in, in allowing for a chance of ambush. Kind of fun. All right, our rest goes without incident. Okay, now it's daylight. Let's equip that bag. Let's disassemble the bedroll. Let's drink some water because we're thirsty. Okay. Let's go. Gayberry tartine for stamina and ice rag because I want to fight this mantis shrimp. Actually, actually, we'll um, we'll go fist weapons. Equip the fist weapons. Then ice rag those. So I kind of wasted an ice rag because I I used it on the axe. And I want to use my fists for the mantis shrimp. He's fighting the pearl bird. Oh my goodness, he got me with his AoE effect. Okay. Okay, there we go. Another AOE projectile. Nice. Good. Let's get our backpack. Again, if you're just starting out, I wouldn't actually recommend going after these mantis shrimp. It can get kind of discouraging because you don't yet know the attack patterns. So, but I do just want to show you that if you stick with it, you can handle them pretty well. Because you'll improve. So I want to encourage you in that. Alright. Now we're going to make our way back to Sierzo. We're going to get some health restoration going here. Let's eat another one of those sticks of jerky. That'll get some health going. As you can see, we've got this status effect, this negative effect, confusion. Impact resistance, minus 25%. Lasts for about, you know, close to three minutes, so... Something to think about. You don't want to go into a tough battle with, you know, confusion bothering you. Let's head up here. Got another pearl bird. I'm going to equip the fang axe. And get out the pearl bird. The pearl birds have one of the great rare items that they drop, but it's very rare. You won't get them. Let's see, raw meat and eggs. Yeah, so they'll drop a pearl bird mask. Basically, they'll drop their face. In which case, you can collect that, equip that, and it improves your movement speed by 15%, I believe. Super cool. Really, really great rare item. Okay, we've got hollowed trunk here, plank shield. I'm gonna take. Okay, the antidote. 
Cures poison, bitter spicy tea, restores burnt stamina. Fang Great Axe, we can just read that. Okay, this bitter spicy tea restores the burnt stamina. That's the ochre spice beetle and water combination that creates that tea. So that's the really valuable tea that you'll want to cook, prepare a lot of. Because you're going to be using a lot of it. We live on tartine and bitter spicy tea early on. Okay, we've got a little fight over here. I kind of want to get involved in this. It sounds kind of fun. Kind of want to watch how it plays out. I want to ice rag up. I'll, I'll just rage too, might as well. Again, just get prepared as much as you can. Drink water. I've already got this uh, stamina boost from the tartine. Okay, the hyena's got the pearl bird on the run. I gotta save that pearl bird. Save it! Yes! Yes. The pearl bird is long gone. Oh, wait, no, there he is. Oh. I'm not going to catch him though, he's just going to keep running away from me. I could maybe pin him up against a cliff, which he can't climb, but sometimes this is not worth it. Just got to let him go. I was kind of, you know, I kind of released him from the jaws of death there. I feel kind of good about myself. Got, okay, hide, raw meat, got some predator bones in that one. All very valuable things. Well, not all very valuable, but predator bones, that's a good grab. Okay, up here, we've got a notable sight right here, these butterflies. You can deploy your sleeping bag or tent and rest here. It's a, considered a safe zone. You will not get ambushed. So no need to guard when you see the butterflies. There's an ochre spice beetle. Cool. Supply cache. We've got arrows. We won't take... We'll take the tripwire traps and the iron scraps. We can sell those for one silver each. If you want to keep the traps and experiment with setting traps, by all means, do so. I'll probably give a little tutorial on traps, maybe. But there's also a couple great videos out there um, displaying the traps and kind of showcasing them. Here's a pearl bird. Let's get at it. Come on. Yes. Egg, raw meat. Really want that mask. You're going to really want that mask. When you first get it, you're going to be so stoked. Okay, as you can see, I haven't touched on it, but I've got this disease down here, status effect, infection. We're losing 3% of your health per minute. But we've got this health recovery too, so we're actually gaining health faster than we're losing it. That's why our health bar, our health gauge doesn't you know, reflect the disease. To, to restore the disease, to restore yourself to health, you can drink a bitter spicy tea. As you can see in the description, it cures infections immediately. So that infection is gone. All right. Let's grab some. There's the gates of Sierzo. More gay berries. Good. Again, I just like to gather all the gay berries I can find early on. Later in the game, I'll pass by these, but. Early on, let's make a lot of gayberry jam, tartine. Let's uh, collect a lot of ochre spice beetles, make some bitter spicy tea. All right, so we got that tribal favor. Let's enter back into Sierzo. Hmm, we've got a bunch of blue sand. We can sell a bunch of it. I want to keep some of it around because I do think it to be a wise thing to have some armor crafted from Loudhammer. Let's go to the Soraborian Caravaner right here and sell him a few things. Greetings, friend. Greetings. Okay, let's sell him the mining pick that's more damaged. Let's see, we'll sell him the hatchet. Sell him all these Azura shrimps. I'll keep, let's see, we've got makeshift leather attire, makeshift leather things. So let, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna sell two of these. I'm gonna keep two because we're gonna use them in crafting. For makeshift leather hat and boots. I'm gonna sell the iron scrap. I'll keep the bones. 
Let's see, we got 11 blue sand. So you can make blue sand chest piece for five blue sands. So I'm gonna sell six of these. Keep five around. I'll sell the insect husks that we got from the mantis shrimps. I'll sell the raw salmon. Okay. I'll sell some of the ice rags. Sell six of those. All right, let's confirm it. All right, we got some decent silver there. 216. Okay, let's go up and talk to Rissa. Let's turn in that tribal favor. So we can save our lighthouse, our beloved home. Okay. Rissa is now, you'll find her in the town hall. Here she is. Greetings. How Greetings. go your efforts? Want to talk about my blood price? You have a way to make that payment. Show me. And on time, I too. I earned the tribal favor. I'm impressed. She's impressed. Well done. Oliel and Izan are leaving Cierzo. Mm. Oliel is leaving to go join the holy mission of Elat. Good. <sighs> a blood price has been declared upon his... <sighs> Roland fell asleep on duty. This is unacceptable. <sighs> well, that's a heavy sign from Rissa. She's really troubled. Come back once you've said your goodbyes to them. Okay, Roland and Izan are, I mean, Oliel and Izan are leaving. She wants us to say our goodbyes. So we'll go ahead and do that in the next part, part three. I hope you enjoyed part two of the beginner's guide. I hope you found it helpful. Leave a comment below if you did. And also, if you're struggling with something, leave a comment. We'll try to work through it. And we'll see you on the next part, part three. We'll complete our first kind of minor quest. And we'll improve and progress. Well, bye.